Okay, YouTube, I'm back. It's been about a month since I made a video, and I uh, had a few minutes, so I figured I'd make a quick 5-10 minute video, maybe. And this is going to be on my Ruger LCP. Alright. Now on this Ruger LCP, I put a rubberized Hogue grip on it. Alright, it's made by a company called Hogue. H-O-G-U-E, Hogue Grips. And they make grips for all sorts of guns, you know, pistols, rifles, shotguns, you name it. All sorts of stuff. They're good. I like them. Usually not too expensive. And uh, with my Ruger here, it seemed like the grip was a little too small, so I added a little, little meat to it. Uh, it feels better in my hand when I shoot it. More comfortable for me. Everybody's different, you know, but I like it. So if you feel like it's too small of a grip, give it a shot. It's only like, I don't know, between 5 and 10 bucks, I think it was. Nothing nothing crazy. It's worth it. Now this is one of the holsters that came with it. It's a pocket holster. So the Ruger LCP would slide on in it. It goes right in your pocket. It's nice because it, you know, it disappears when it's in your pocket. No one knows you got it. It looks like maybe a, a wallet maybe or a phone in your pocket. And you can have your hand in your pocket right on it, ready to pull it out in case you need it. You know, so that's quick on the draw. That's nice, you know, if you feel like it. You know, if you feel like there's something that uh, seems kind of crazy out there and feel like there might be a danger, put your hand on it and be ready to go. You know, it's nice. All right, I have other holsters, too. It all depends on what I'm wearing or what time of year. So, you know, something like this. A pair of jeans is nice. Fits in there good. You know, if I'm wearing another pair of jeans with a belt, Something like this holster here. It's it's a DeSantis holster. That's who it's made by. DeSantis. I'll try to get a shot of that. Right. It's all leather. You know, leather and a steel clip, metal clip. It's got a retention strap right there. Right. Which is pretty nice. Nice and secure. I'll tell you what. And this thing's buttoned up, and that thing's on your belt. This this uh, piece of metal here, it's uh, it's pretty tough. It ain't coming off, so I like that too. But that does print a little more. If I'm wearing just a t-shirt, then uh, this thing kind of you know shows a little bit more through the t-shirt that there I have something under there. So if that's the case, if I'm wearing just like a t-shirt and like a pair of shorts or something, and I want to hide hide a little bit better. I got something like this. This is made by Blackhawk, I think. Blackhawk size number four, right? It's soft, neoprene or something. And this goes inside the waistband, inside your waistband, in the front, in the side. You know, it all depends on where you like to have it. I usually keep mine at like the two o'clock position, right, right in front of me. Sometimes to the, you know, three o'clock on the side. But uh, it's nice. Anyway. So it's a 380, like I was saying. The rounds I shoot out of mine, you know, as long as they're reliable, you know, I, you know, I feel comfortable with them. These are federal. All right, if it zooms in, I'm sorry, Hornady, Hornady, all right, good quality ammo, hollow points, and I took them to this range, took them to the range, and shot a bunch of them. And they cycle fine through the pistol, you know, no problems, no issues. And until I have an issue, I'll probably just stick with them. All right? I do have one of my uh, reloads here, which is just solid ball lead. Now, it's around those, which helps with reliability, you know, feeding into the gun. It feeds a lot better than some hollow points. And the only reason I have this one out here is because. Uh, I don't know why, but I can't find one of mine. I must have dropped it somewhere, but so I threw this one in there at the bottom of my magazine for just, just to fill until I get some more. You know? But uh, this thing here, it's got a slide lock right here, so it's locked back now. It's empty. Alright, you see right on through it, it's empty. Push the button down, or I can pull the slide back either way, and that'll make the slide go forward. There we go, push it down, it goes forward. Put some orange paint on the front, some nail polish to help me with my sights because the sights are uh, pretty minimal, which is fine on a on like a self-defense small little pistol. You don't, you know, you're not target shooting at 50 yards or nothing, but 
you should be ready for it, you never know. So I do practice at some distances with this, and uh, I'll tell you what, I can shoot out there pretty good. You know, you always want to practice a little further, because you never know where a threat could come from. But uh, they're not expensive, you know, it all depends. I mean, if you're on the on a budget, you can find these things, you know, under 300 bucks. You know, save up a little bit of each paycheck for a little bit, and uh, purchase one, you know, it's better than nothing. During uh hot summer days or any time really you don't want to always be carrying this big giant five inch 1911 heavy all steel gun you know some people do but uh and i have but uh it's sometimes it's nice just to have something small and convenient and lightweight and it disappears and in your pocket you kind of forget it's there but you also know it's there and you have that sense of security like you know what i got it in case something were to happen because you never know today you never know and if you got family you know, kids, anything like that, you know, you got to protect them, right? Number one, protect, protect your family, and it's your damn right to have a firearm, right? As an American, damn right. So, here's some magazines that came with it. I've had no issues with these yet. This one uh, is a six-rounder. It has the extended, uh, you know base on it so I can put my extra finger on it you know get more purchase on the grip this one's more flush it's not you know it's holds uh, six so I guess they both hold six and I think one holds a little more hold up it says six but I tell you what I think it holds seven let me load it up and see Sorry about that, I gotta adjust the camera so I can see what I'm looking at here. Okay. Let's see how that works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it holds seven. It says six on there, but it actually holds seven. I don't know why they don't put a 7 on there. Yep. It holds 7. Right? So with these 7, if I were to rack the slide, put one in the chamber, and then pull the mag out and put another one in the magazine, then I'd have a total of uh, eight, 8 rounds of 380 ACP. So that's pretty good, you know. 380, yeah, some people don't like it. I like it, you know. Um, it's come a long way in the past, uh, I don't know how many years, but people say back in the day it wasn't as, you know, good, but now it's a lot better. It's come a long way with technology, bullet technology and all that, but, uh, you know, a, a 380 is, uh, basically a 9mm. I don't have a 9mm on me right now. Mm, here's one, this one. Okay, here's a 9mm. It's like a dummy round that I just have laying around. There's nothing, no primer, nothing, there's no powder in it. But uh, anyway, so see, try and get in there. The light's horrible, huh? The only difference is, is the case is a little bit longer in the nine millimeter, but the diameter is the same. So, 380 is just like an, a short nine millimeter. It's got a little less powder, usually a lighter bullet than a nine millimeter, but uh, it works. It works good. So as you saw, let me take these out. Nothing in it. Check it again. Nothing. Two empty magazines, right? This ammo, getting it out of here. So there's no, no chance of me putting anything in there. Okay. So anyway, here is our flat one. Okay. Nice and flush. With this. And get two fingers on it. My pinky kind of just hangs around, but no big deal. I mean, it's nice. You know, I'm comfortable with it. You might not be, but so this would be six plus one. You'd have seven. This one here, you'd have seven in the mag plus one there for eight total. And this I can still get two on there, but it just it just feels better, you know. I have more, my 
ring finger, whatever you want to call it, fits on there better. It's I have more of a grip. It feels good. So it's up to you what you like. Plus, when you're carrying concealed, that little bit of extra, a little bit of extra sticking out might print a little bit. So when it's under your shirt, it might stick out a little bit more compared to the flush one. So, or if you're doing it in your pocket with this guy here. You know, in your pocket, you don't have much room, so you might want the little smaller, smaller uh, grip. You know, the butt plate on the end, or whatever you call it, the um, the base of that magazine, a little smaller than the bigger one for in your pocket. But if I'm going to this guy here, where it's on my belt, you know what? Maybe I'll stick this one on there. So it's up to you. There's, there's options. But I've shot this plenty of times, plenty of times with factory ammo for uh, for ammo I reloaded with it and no issues. All right, I'm pretty uh, confident that it's going to go bang. You know, if I do my part and hit the target, if I do my part. I mean, yeah, I mean it's a small gun, sm small sight radius, but the trigger is heavy, which is fine. It's more of like a revolver double action trigger than like a light light trigger of, uh, you know, like a 1911 or a Glock or something like that, all right? So, the reset of this thing, you really got to bring it out. Here two clicks. On the second click is when it resets. That was the first one. That was the second click. From there, I can start squeezing again. Pull, 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 boom. All right? Two clicks. On the second click is when it resets. One. Two, and then pull. See, so you gotta be, you gotta practice with it. Because some guns, it's only one little click, and that's the reset. You, and it's, you don't gotta move as far. Or every every trigger on every pistol is different. So if you want to practice, you know, you know, resetting that trigger and getting nice small groups and being proficient with your firearm, which you should be. If you have a firearm, you should be hitting the range as much as possible and practicing with it. You don't want to take this thing out and have to use your self defense and, and screw up and hurt yourself or someone else or you know, I mean, it's your responsibility. If you're going to have it, learn how to use the damn thing. So, anyway, I like it. You can find them for under 300 bucks. you know, in the upper twos, mid twos, upper twos. You know, there's different versions. This is the Gen 2. There's other ones that uh, have better sights than these really tiny guys. You know, they're a little bit higher on the other ones, you know. But, you know, just check them out. But they also cost a little more money. They come in all different colors. So anyway, that's my short, quick video of the 380. I like it. Check them out. Ruger's a quality uh, manufacturer in my in my book. All right. One, two, boom. Okay. And you get a good grip on it, right? Nice high grip, right up in the web of your. Uh, between your thumb and your index finger, right there, you want to get it up in there, right? Wrap it around, okay? Finger off the trigger at all times, in a safe direction. This hand, you don't put it underneath, you don't put it back here, you don't cross your thumbs, because this slide's going to come back. And if your thumbs are crossed, it's going to cut you wide open, you're going to drop the damn thing. So just, you know, kind of wrap your hands around like this, in the front, like this. Thumbs forward. Right? Finger straight off the trigger until you're ready to fire. When you're on target, you can put your finger on there. Slowly squeeze it. All right? Anyway, that's a quick little video on the Ruger LCP. I like it. Check them out. All right? That's it. Have a good 4th of July.